So, I'm get my matches out here. Probably have to relight. Why matches, you ask? Because I am a winner. I'm the winner of the first out at the Kitsap Pipe Club. Once again, my my uh, title is intact. <laughs> That was Saturday. Great fun. I'll put up some pictures at the end. Thanks, Melita, for sharing some of your pictures. It was a great day for it. Um, sunlight shining in. Surprisingly warm. We all expected to be freezing our nether parts off. Um, but it was, really, it was really a beautiful day. So, I went out at, I don't know, 17 or 19 minutes, thereabouts. We were smoking. Everybody buys the same pipe. So, Kevin Brackett, who is um, a wholesaler of pipes and tobacco and cigars, uh, local to Seattle. He always comes over, has a good time at the pipe club meetings. So, he provided the pipe, which is this... Uh, Greek carved briar. I think we have we had a bunch of them, and so we've uh, been Minetto, G Minetto. That's it. <laughs> but it's a good smoking pipe, and so uh, everybody has to have the same brand new pipe. Um, we've used it in years past. Uh, there are enough that we've used it before. And uh, uh, a very measured amount of, in this case, vintage 965 from 2013. So it was a pleasure to smoke it. Two matches. And then a set amount of time, you know, we're all sitting around a table. And so the proctor, who in this case was Kevin, uh, you know, he says, okay, five minutes to prep your tobacco and pipe. So everybody takes her pipe apart, and um, we have a little piece of paper, white paper, and uh, our little tobacco is in a pouch, and here a little Ziploc baggie. So everybody dumps that out and, you know, makes sure it's really nice and perfect for their taste. And then... We have two minutes to light, so you get two matches. You have a tamper. Uh, a tamper is provided, but it uh, can only, and you can use it during the slow smoke, but it, your pipe has to be in your mouth. You can't take your pipe out and tamp. I'm not sure, quite sure why that is. Anyway, um, you know, various rules. They're international pipe club. I... <laughs> or the ISPCA or something. Um, so, two minutes to, to light. You've already packed your pipe. And so, then bing, off we go. And uh, I always talk too much. Can't resist it. But the first out award is a thousand matches. So, um, yeah, success. So now I have many matches. Um, the longest out was like an hour and seven minutes or something. And he was really serious about it. He was in the zone. Um, so it was fun to watch. It was just a really a good time. Really a good time. Um, <laughs> so right now, so uh, Joe Case, or is it the Case? Uh, Joe, anyway, from Laudizi, uh, who's the West Coast wholesale rep. Uh, nice guy. Uh, comes up occasionally for our pipe club meetings. And uh, he was there, and he brought some pipes uh, uh, Laudisi now apparently owns uh, Peterson and Savinelli. 
So not just the distribution rights, I believe. So they own the whole kit and caboodle. So um, he had some Petersons there, and this is one of them. So I, I picked this up from him. It's a pub pipe, but in a sandblast. So, yeah. It was an impulse purchase, I admit. But um, any leftover pipes from his table full of pipes was going to go over with Doug Owen at Cargo Hold. And Doug was super generous, as always, in providing uh, the, uh, the awards. So there was a 17-year-old bottle of Glenlivet. There was uh, a really nice Peterson, um, I don't even know what you'd call it. Uh, it was a system pipe, I believe, Rocky Rustication, um, but real nice. And then uh, kind of the, the really great thing was a Nording, a handmade Nording with a really nice Viking-like silver band and uh, really super detailed, a freehand. A big free hand. So, uh, Will went, the winner went for that, and who wouldn't, you know. So, anyway, it was just super good fun. Everybody got a prize, because there were enough prizes. So, what am I smoking? I'm smoking something different here. Uh, McClellan's Oriental blending uh, mixture. So nice. So I remember I picked up this and some Latakia in a similar shape, uh, labeled tin, and some of the specific Orientals like Energy and uh, Bosma and so forth. I was, I was just really interested in that. This is from 2009. These wonderful premium Greek and Turkish Oriental tobaccos are mildly sweet with a delicate herbal or spicy aroma. The most prized varieties represented here are, in various combinations, the exotic base or condiment tobaccos at the heart of the finest Oriental or English mixture. So just smoking the oriental portion of it is a lot of fun. But I talk too much. So, and this is a, a big bowl, and I'm just here for lunch. So uh, you shouldn't let big bowls uh, dissuade you from uh, using a large pipe because uh, you can just fill them half full and then smoke that. Here's my... Okay, I guess I will use my match. Oh, there's my lighter. I'm tempted to use my lighter. <laughs> because I'm talking too much. I always talk too much. This is nice. It is kind of spicy, a little sweet. 2009 is real mellow. So I'm indulging a couple of my uh, my hobbies, if you will, today. So pipe smoking and reading uh, history, and uh, I'll talk about the camera lens here in a minute. So um, I think everybody should read as much as they want to, and sometimes we don't because there there just isn't time. You know, I end up reading sometimes for before bed. Evening is a great time to read, if you ask me. And during when it's daylight hours, I like to be out doing stuff. And in the morning, I don't get a newspaper anymore, but I get a newspaper on my phone, so virtually. In fact, several. I, I, I believe in supporting uh, journalism in the fourth estate. And you do that these days by having a subscription, right? So, which usually burns better than this. 
Man, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just not paying attention. But reading is, um, has always been just a big thing for me ever since I was a kid. Ever since I learned to read, I just would lose myself in books. So I've got a few that are, I've got going on right now. Um, one of them is Deadfall. Uh, generations of logging in the Pacific Northwest. And there are some great stories in here. Oh my gosh. I love local history. Uh, and I have a place in, in outside of Silverton, Colorado. I have a few mining claims. They don't produce anything. I mean, and so Zeke Zanoni who, there were many Italian miners, uh, actually from northern Italy, from the Tyrol, that would occasionally become part of Austria or become part of Italy, you know, depending on the uh, wars of great and lasting impact. <laughs> Little known wars. <laughs> That's another book I'm reading right now. Um, but this was co-written by Zeke Zanoni. Let's see um, and it's about the San Juan, uh, mostly from Silverton's perspective. Oh my, there's a deer walking through. Now the last time a deer walked through, it died. Let's see if I can swing this around. Oh yeah. Okay, there we go. And this is not autofocus, so just walking through the yard. He doesn't look hurt. That's good. Walking down the trail through the woods. <laughs> okay, let's go back to our video here. Uh, this is what you get for living out in the woods. Okay, well then we will get to talk about my other hobby, which is photography. So... I am using here a, let's adjust that just a little bit, uh, <laughs> and there's the neighbors putting out the empties. <laughs> Did you hear that? The clink of glass. Okay, screw this. I'm going to use the lighter. Just for efficiency's sake. Have a good day, Buck. Um, this is a Sigma FP, which is a weird camera. Very niche. I mean, but really fun. I, I've i been using Sigma, Sigma cameras for years now. And uh, they're just, they're really fun. This is not a Foveon sensor. Uh, and that's a whole nother discussion. But, uh, but it gets great results. And it's L-mount, which is uh, Leica, thus L. Uh, they started that. And then Panasonic, Lumix, um, and Sigma joined in. Now uh, Blackmagic, the Cinema cameras, uh, have joined in on the L-mount alliance. And one reason is um, it's totally open. Uh, and it's a... Uh, amount that can accommodate a lot of uh, adapters, for instance. Um, so I have an adapter on here to some vintage A-series, the totally brass body uh, manual, totally manual uh, Pentax lenses for Pentax 645 when they were film cameras. So, medium format film cameras. So, so uh, this is a Pentax 35 millimeter 645A series lens. Uh, they're really cheap. They're often really great quality lenses. They don't have 
aspheric glass and uh, the SLD elements that modern lenses do to make them like ridiculously sharp. But they have a quality about them and Pentax uh, always had good lens coatings, super multi-coating SMC. Um, and they're just like phenomenally inexpensive. So I also picked up recently an adapter that goes, attaches to my L-mount camera and on the other end it attaches to a Pentax 645 lens and then it rotates in quadrants to take into account the larger image circle of the medium format lens, which is bigger than full frame, which the FP is. So what that does is it gives you four photos that work in the same plane but around the edge of uh, the light circle of the medium format lens and then you combine those in post-processing into a single image, uh, merge them together and it gives you this somehow kind of a vintage look uh, of medium format that is I think really fun. So um, as I take more of those maybe I'll throw them up here at the end of videos or something. But anyway that's a hobby. See, see how it's a hobby? Yeah. Um, so anyway I get to uh, play with my hobbies. Which is fun. And as you get older you realize that you better do this stuff before you can't do this stuff. You know this uh, the Silverton book um, I knew many of the people that he mentions in here. I didn't know them real well because I spent some time there. Um, I'd go up with uh, friends and we quit our jobs in April and then go up there, set up a tent on one of the mining claims and then just spend the summer exploring um, all that mining country up there. And by the time it got to be uh, July, we'd often run out of money and we'd have to uh, get a job in town, washing dishes, or in my case I baked at a restaurant for a while. Um, and I did work for the Sunnyside Mine, which was uh, this really an agglomeration of mining claims. You know, that's a whole story. And much of that book is written by people who worked for that mining outfit, which was going while I was there. And then they got a little too close to the 12,300 foot elevation Lake Emma. And luckily it was a Sunday evening, so nobody was in the mine. There could have been 165 miners in there. I mean, it was a big operation. It was the biggest gold mine in the country at the time, I believe. Um, and Lake Emma broke through into the miles of tunnels and stopes and just uh, all that network of historic mining. And so it just, like a science fiction movie, boom, blew out of the American Tunnel in Gladstone. and. It was epic, but it they did work two years to reopen it, and it did stay open for a little while, but then, you know, falling mineral prices, uh, it, just, it just didn't work out. So it ended up closing permanently, and environmental regulations became more um, intense and more expensive, and look at the sunshine, oh my gosh, see up here in the Pacific Northwest, once you hit fall into early spring, any sunshine is just like so great. So anyway, reading is just so important. I think people need to do it. And uh, so this is actually a really fun book too. Um, written well enough that it isn't doesn't dive totally into the weeds um, 
and is quite nicely explanatory. So there's a helicopter headed over to Seattle, probably flight for life or a Coast Guard helicopter. During the day, traffic noise up on the main road here is noticeable, but uh, but uh, at night it's just completely quiet here. So it's a great combination of um, being able to go to the big city and not being in the big city. So we like that. Yeah, works much better. So a pub pipe. So it's like a house pipe in size almost. It's just a skosh smaller. But it's much more affordable than a house pipe. It's like a third to a half less expensive. It's still, you know, an investment pipe, but it's not as expensive. So, anyway, I really like this guy. And like I say, it was one, and that's another thing, you know, where you justify to yourself, ah, you know, I'm getting older, how much longer can I do this? And, uh, yeah. Now, Zeke Zanoni, who passed away like three weeks ago, and I get the Silverton paper as well, the Silverton newspaper, which is one of the oldest, oldest in the state of Colorado, still publishing. <coughs> so he, gosh, he smoked a pipe until near the end, I think. And he was in his later 80s when he passed two weeks ago. So I never knew him. I said hello to him a few times, but um, yeah, he was always a very serious fellow. <laughs> but anyway, just remembering people. So, lots of matches. Um, <laughs> my title is intact. <laughs> okay, time to get back to work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Trying to get the I genuinely have a lot of respect for those guys. That's that one sure because they've got some pretty stuff. Yeah. 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 This stuff is pretty pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. That's hard in Denmark. Oh yeah, yeah. they do the low end stuff. Is you know. Yeah, it's hard to do in Denmark. Yeah. Makes snowballs out. Well, I know when we were getting the cases at the Seattle Club. Um, Every once in a while, we'd get a case of an of an English blend, right. and those were Pretty usually good. really yeah. good, and they would disappear. I mean, that was the only time that like all the, all the boxes, would, uh, all the tins would go away. Well, the nine six five is getting to the point where it's like thirty seven dollars for a tin in this state. So. I put in the Sutliff clone, and it's pretty clean. The clone is good. Yeah, it's called Match 20. I call it Alfred's Duke Street Mixture because that's just me. But it's called Match 20 is the Sutliff uh, generic. Yeah. Pretty quiet here. Will's in the rain? zone. Anybody want to do smoke rings? <laughs> 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 you guys are doing our one day of sun. Yeah. <laughs> Concentrate yeah. on doing the smoke rings and you'll go out. Too wet. Too wet. That's a, uh, that's a this is kind of strategy. Yeah, to get people out. Think about something else. Think about something else.